Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Uh, good, alhamdulillah. And you? I'm, I'm doing well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I just want to set the stage for everyone who will listen in the future so that people yeah. can understand the context of this conversation. And then we're going to give some time for people to join and then we can get started into our conversation. So... The context of this conversation for all of those people who will listen this session later is that we will or uh, we have a dear friend, dear brother over here who is a convert to Islam and he has oftentimes we take Islam for uh, granted. Like people who are born Muslims, they just think it is easy and people who are born Shia, they think it is easy. But those who actually have gone through the journey to find the true path, they have actually went on the difficult journey of going against what the society has taught them for their entire youth, as well as their family, as well as uh, they've gone on this journey of finding what their nature is calling them towards. So it's a... Uh, I have uh, I am just mentioning that I have a person who has actually gone on this journey to find the truth and his name is Hassan his Muslim name and uh, we will be talking with him about his journey uh, in this particular uh, discussion and as I mentioned I take for the first several years, like 20 years of my life, I took things for granted uh, that this is the way of how people are because there was no diversity. Everyone was Muslim where I was growing up. Uh, and uh, when I saw diversity, when I saw different religions, I started reading and studying and I found like how beautiful Islam truly is without actually... Um, which cannot be truly understood until unless a person goes on the journey of finding the right path. And this path is difficult. It's not easy. It is a very difficult path to go on, especially based on the stories and other things. Uh, Walaikum Aslam. So feel free, guys, to ask any questions, especially if you're a new Muslim or if you have any questions for Hassan. Hassan is his Muslim name. Uh, and uh, we will just get into that so thank you Hassan for taking the time and uh, for the willingness and the courage to share uh, your journey with us uh, thank you and by the by the way everything the weather and everything is okay on your side I know like uh, it's been pretty rough CNN is showing that there have been tornadoes a lot of like people have died houses destroyed it's crazy yeah it's pretty crazy but here in the midwest uh, we do get a lot of uh, tornadoes um uh down in texas kansas you know oklahoma these areas but um for me uh here it's been pretty 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 good actually the weather today it's very windy but uh, i think it's only 72 degrees out or 73 something like that Nice. Very nice out. Yeah, sunny. Very, very nice. Very nice. I was when I was looking at uh, the tornadoes, and in fact, this is something that uh, we have talked about previously. So I'll just mention this, and I'll just connect this to the importance of finding, finding God, or finding or being on the journey. So if you, if we just think about the last few months i won't even go back like last few years i won't even go back that uh, that far but we had <clears throat> the month of ramadan was uh going on so that was march and on the last friday of the month of ramadan we had an earthquake in the northeast and that earthquake was strong enough that people felt it and people got scared but weak enough that it did not cause any damage it happened on the Friday of uh, before the end of Ramadan. Then the same morning, I was looking at that sun, uh, and it was it's interesting that our scholar, the mutual scholar that we talked to, Doctor Hatim, 
uh, he also looked at that sun and the sun was the sky in the morning was very red that day and i just felt something weird that that might something is weird anyways that was towards the end of march then we had in on april 8th the solar eclipse that transfers from south to north america passing by i believe six or seven cities named nineveh and nineveh is a town in babylon which according to the old scripture jonah went and there was a solar eclipse and they though that town actually repented so it was interesting that it the solar eclipse went across and there was a solar eclipse in 2017 as well which went from west to east in the uh, in the US and then we had covid and so many other things that happened now we were worried and we people who have been following this channel for some uh, for a long time they know that we have talked about the solar eclipse and the sign of god but that was the second sign and then before that there was a lunar eclipse uh, within the month of ramadan so the month of ramadan had an earthquake as lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse which is unlike very rare to happen and happening in the united states and the what we gathered from all of that was what we are in for is we are at a crossroads either we as humanity repent or these signs will not continue forever there is going to be a point where these signs will end and judgment will come especially with what is happening the harrowing scenes that we see around the world so then we continue and then right after that the protests start happening in the universities and they are culled and they are curbed with force okay then there were these northern lights from the entire european area to the united states this far like down south northern lights are typically in the very northern areas so again signs in the heavens then these kind of twisters and tornado breakouts which are like wiping out entire blocks this is like one after another after another after another and then the heat wave i know people might call this is all natural and other things but i think there is something bigger god is sending signs before there is something else that is coming and we know that imam mahdi the last successor of the prophet and jesus christ uh, prophet isa they are still there god has kept them for the end of times so anyways that was the preamble to highlight why it is important to connect ourselves to try to find the right path because obviously guidance comes from god but there is something in our heart that tells us that whether this is the right path or not and you have gone on that path i mean there was something in you that pushed you to see uh the the right path what was what was that yeah uh, before i get into that as well uh there was another sign recently with uh the giant meteor that was seen oh, over yes. Spain and Portugal. Uh, yes. Very green, green kind of teal colored, um, you know, uh, object. Uh, very strange. Um, and it was captured by many people, um, you know, just for some reason recording themselves in the middle of the night. But uh, very interesting stuff that's going on. And of course, um, the media does downplay those northern lights. However, um, you have to take in consideration that Northern Lights have not been seen that far south around the world for hundreds, hundreds of years. Um, uh, and usually, even even in during the last uh, solar maximum that we had, uh, that, w that did not happen. And I've read on NASA, uh, the NASA's website, that they're even downplaying uh, this solar maximum as being uneventful, yet we already had... A few major events resulting from uh, this uh, this uh, incoming solar maximum that is uh, approaching us uh, and will last for I think about seven years mm -hmm. or eleven years seven to eleven years. So yeah, these there's we're, we're in for for something these these next years uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, now moving on to your uh, question, um, could you repeat it one more time? Sorry, I, I, no, no, I kind no, of no, got no, into it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so ba- basically, these signs, Allah says in Quran, that you should ponder upon the signs. And these signs, sometimes they're in heaven, sometimes they're in our lives, sometimes these are things that we should be just thinking about as we experience different things in our lives, which will course, which will help us course correct. So how did you, What were there any signs, was there any feeling that you had which pushed you towards finding this path, this path of, uh, or at least thinking, not even saying like finding this path, but was what was that that prompted you to think like there is something, there has to be a path to God, but what? How do I know that? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think signs are very important uh, for humanity. Um, you know, we dictate many of our, you know, daily activities and just ongoings uh, on signs every day. Um, you know, we, you know, when you're driving, you see the sign that says slow down or there's a, you know, traffic incoming, you know, got red lights, green lights, everything, right? But um, there is something of a gut kind of feeling, so to say, within every human. In Islam, there is a concept for this. Um, this is called a fitra. The fitra is like uh, kind of like a nature of, of a human being that that um is it's 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 a pre kind of uh, like a template for like a how to explain this um it's 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 basically just human nature in in a way uh, so to speak though the arabic uh, meaning for it is a little bit deeper this is i'll just go with this uh meaning for now because i guess for for me when it first began was when i was a child um uh I, I guess I was always kind of always had the uh, predisposition towards um, exploring and having curiosity. Um, and while I was exploring and and things like that as a child, I noticed uh, several things. Oh, we we cannot hear you. Seems like the connection might have faltered a little bit, but we're going to continue. Uh, the... Hey, uh, we couldn't hear you, Hassan. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, basically what I was saying is when I was a young kid, I would go outside, I would play uh, like any other kid, but I would notice that certain things seemed a little interesting. For example, seeing certain flowers, the way they blossom, uh, seeing the trees, the way they kind of, the wind kind of brushes the the wind against the leaves and stuff like that. Seeing the little animals and doing their own little things, the bees, the ants, all these things. I paid attention to them. But I noticed something like that something was there. Something was a little bit guiding them, I guess, in a way. Um, but I didn't know what that was. So, um, that was, I guess, my first introduction into into that there is something there. I guess part of that fitra, understanding that that there is a guiding hand in in the universe, uh, so to say. Sorry, I, I think we can't hear you right now. Oh, oh yeah. yes, sorry, sorry, yeah. I was unmute. So, I was just, uh, I'm just writing it down because I, I really like your perspective, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. So, when you were a kid, and uh, you had two options. One is that you could think that everything is random, like how atheists claim that everything is random, and this came out of like <laughs> the word came is, is there for no reason. And then the other one is like there is a reason. Uh, there is a structure to it. How come you did not think about that things were random and what prompted you to think like there is this reason, this... Because the first question is...
Yeah, so, I mean, the thought did kind of come into my head, I guess, a little bit, after, but only after that things, maybe it was just random. So, like, you see, like, an event that happens, you know, like, for example, uh, what we call now, like, coincidences, right? And the first thing your brain does is, like, like it realizes that this is not something normal, that there is a specific flow of events that created this effect. But then I guess the laziness of the human mind or something kind of reverts to, oh, but that, you know, that's why you hear kids saying, oh, that was random, you know, or like people right. saying that was random, you know, but it, it, it wasn't random. That's the thing. It's just that your mind um, doesn't maybe doesn't have the time or maybe just doesn't want to like calculate every little single thing that led up to that but it wasn't it wasn't random and so for me as a child you know children they don't really have uh, that kind of a random kind of um, response I guess like the or to say that it was random like children when you children are pretty blunt like you know they will tell you oh yeah you look ugly or not right so right um, <laughs> And so that's the that's the purity of of a child, you know. Like that's that's the the purity of adolescence is that you know you experience things as they are. You know, there is no oh yeah that was a, that was a too much of a coincidence or that was that was random. That's, it just is what it is. And so for me, when I saw like these plants and all these little animals and all these things, like it was not random it, for me. It was something there. There is something there. You know, like the truth, the the huck, you know, the Arabic word for truth yep. is is very evident. It's it doesn't hide behind anything. It, I think it is we human beings that we kind of add layers to it because we like to label things. You know, one of the first things that our father, Adam, salam, did was, you know, he was labeling things. You know, this is a chair. This is a goat. This is a tree. You know, like this is just our nature to do that. But. When we're in a state of like purity, because Adam, he was not uh, ever a child. He was a man always, you know, but we as like, you know, we're in a state of like purity as children, um, you know, everything's new to us and stuff like this. I think that we experience everything just as it is, you know, mm -hmm. um, similar, I guess, to Adam, but in, in, in different in, in a way, I guess, uh, from my perspective, that I think that we... Uh, when it comes to to seeing uh, the, the you know these natural occurrences, uh, it it leaves no room for for falsehood. It's just pure fitra. Like, um, and I think that's another way of kind of understanding what fitra is. Is is if I explained it correctly there. Um, as Allah says in Quran that Allah created all human beings on fitra. And uh, within Fitra, in fact, there was uh, there was a discussion that I was having with an atheist at one point that religion and Fitra are very closely related because religion, the true religion, is a way to groom your Fitra because Fitra is what Allah has created, but it has to be groomed in a way. And uh, religion is if done properly the right religion is given so that it grooms the fitra so that it can reach its true potential uh, but obviously religions have been masked over time for worldly desires and other things that people do not find what is true uh, and uh, it's hard to find that truth so when when you realize that there was it was not random how did you go about finding the a religion or you were like you were not always muslim right yeah i, w I wasn't always muslim i was actually born into a christian family uh roman catholic to be specific um and you know as a catholic you're you are kind of um, diverted away from that primordial fitra I guess, which is, uh, you know, the belief of of uh, of of a, of a oneness and everything, a tawhid. You know, that primal tawhid is what I like to call it. So then you're kind of you're kind of um, counter groomed, I guess, in a way to believe. Oh, but you know, this is how things are. You know, the Trinity and all these things. 
And, uh, you know, as a child, you know, you're like a sponge. So you take in everything. But I also feel that it depends on the individual. I think that some individuals remain on that pure fitra until they find the path. And I feel that some others become, um, how do I say, indoctrinated with uh, the whatever religion it is that the parents have. Um, and I've heard of a of a hadith. I'm unsure if it's uh, uh, if it's a non Shia or Shia the source, but I think it rings true regardless. Which is basically that every child is upon fitra until the parent. Uh, you know, moves them away from it, like basically takes, you know, takes them off of it. Um, and I feel like that that is that is pretty true. Um, I feel like every child is upon that true fitra until something else comes into into their life that um gives them a you know different perspective on things, even though it is a false perspective. Um, but yeah. Um, what else? Um. Um, so yeah, for me, uh, yeah, born into a Catholic family, um, always taught that, you know, Jesus was God and the Trinity and all these things. Um, this was later on, of course, like when I was like a little bit older than when I first experienced, you know, that first experience. Um, but yeah, as time, as time went by, I kind of just developed, um, my own mind. I wasn't really ever a person to follow. And this is why I say it's up to the individual. And that's why, you know, Muslims always say that it is Allah who guides, you know, uh, it is not, nobody else can really, you know, take you out of it. If, if Allah wills something for you, he, you're going to be guided towards that path and nobody can take you from it. Everybody has different natures and everybody learns at their own, diff at a different pace. Um, there's people who may stay on that path, people who may divert from it and then go back to the right path. Um, it all really depends on their environment and, and just very, you know, too many variables to actually even, uh, count or fully understand it. But I feel that for me, um, Alhamdulillah, I was, uh, actually kept on the right path for all my life. Um, even after growing up in a Catholic home. Nice, nice. So, what was when when you were looking at, uh, for example, uh, you were growing up in a Christian home and obviously going to church and all those things, and uh, the belief that good things have to be done, and all like Ten Commandments and study Bible study, all those things. What was there that kept on? Like, were you looking for other religions as well? Like, why were you looking for religion? What were you looking for during that time? Like, what was your thought process? Yeah, um, I guess during that time, I never really attended like Sunday school or any of that stuff, maybe once or twice. Um, but I did, um, I did learn about, uh, you know, my religion, you know, what it is about, the core concepts of it. Um, but I guess the nagging feeling was that I remembered that feeling that I had as a kid because I have pretty good memory, alhamdulillah. <laughs> and so um, when it comes to like uh, long-term memory stuff. Um, and so I kind of kept that feeling in me because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this feeling of uh, seeing these things. And so it, the nagging feeling was just how can God, right? from what I experienced when I was a kid, how can God be reduced to this single human being, you know, or this being that is in the form of a human? Like, how, how is that possible? Like, how is it, how is the, and of course the priests, they would tell me like, oh, but it, you know, you have to believe in the Trinity, you know, this is, this is the way it is, you know, father, the son and the Holy spirit. And, you know, they're all, uh, you know, this and this and that. So then I was like, okay, but I, you know, the way they explained it, I never really, I never really understood it fully. Um, and because they, they explained it in like ways, like, for example, and I, I know this because I have many discussions with Christians and they say, think about this as uh, a, the, the states of gas. 
solid water, <laughs> solid liquid. Yeah, they, and, they yeah, yeah they ahead. definitely they definitely do that. The way I was told, and they have a they have different explanations for that question. Always, um, my explanation was because I kept asking questions, and of course they tried the whole. Uh, similar to the whole stages of gas type thing. Uh, but because I kept asking questions, they kind of just defaulted to, oh, it's it's just a divine mystery. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's it. Um, that it was some sort of divine mystery and that we cannot really understand the, or conceptualize it, you know, in in the form that we are right now or something like this. But... That didn't make sense to me because um, when I when I was a kid and I and I felt those feelings, it was pretty evident. It was, it was pretty straightforward. Like I I understood that there was something there, like that there was uh, I guess per se like a god or like a like a guiding hand. Um, there was none of this. Oh, you know, there's a, you know the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and these things. It it was all how you say a paradox, which is what I found out as I grew up, that it was a paradox. The the Trinity in itself is that. And I that's when I started the next stage of my journey was was after I after I couldn't reconcile this nagging feeling with with that memory that I had, that feeling and which I still feel today even. So how how does it and like well, when you feel today, how does it feel like? Because obviously that initial feeling that you had, that was about like there has to be a creator. Like when you see the trees, when you see the signs, when you see things happening out of the flow, there has to be a reason why they're having. Uh, and we know from Quran that uh, Allah talks to people through signs. And I'll give you an example, a really beautiful example today, which like I, I cried today in the morning and i'll tell you this example because it just shook me um what happened like last night i know that uh yesterday uh, or two days ago i saw my gutter water gutter uh from the roof leaking when it rained and i planned that i will clean the gutter over the weekend and i knew that on monday there will be rain so i was very upset that it was leaking but yesterday it was really hot so i didn't want to go on the roof to do it during while it was like sweltering hot and i knew i had an experience previously in hot i was i burnt my arms <laughs> on the roof so i was like i'm not going to do it i'll do it tomorrow morning like today morning at uh, after fajr salat for i'll be very honest like i'm a human like everyone else and obviously when it is ramadan i uh, wake up for like before the sahar, but sometimes I miss uh, Fajr Salat, which is wrong, but uh, I like it, it happens. I pray it later. Uh, but for the last three days, it was happening consistently. I was sleeping later around like midnight, and I wasn't able to wake up around five for to pray. Now, this time today, my I my I woke up at five twenty something. It was about to. I still had time. I prayed, and then right away I went on to the roof, and I cleaned the gutters. All it hadn't started to rain. I cleaned the gutters. I came as I was coming back. I was like I put my. Uh, uh, the ladder back folded it and as soon as I put it inside the house it started pouring like crazy and I thank God that I just finished what I had intended but that thing that really took me to the point that I started crying was this that when I was required to pray only for God I did not wake up and Allah did not do anything against me, even though I did not pray on time. But when it was something that I had to do myself, Allah woke me up at that time. I prayed, went up, cleaned the gutters, came back right in time 
before it started raining. So Allah cared about me more than I cared about Allah. And that in itself was such a feeling that we take these signs for granted where Allah is giving these signs every single day. And um, they're, they're very powerful when you think about uh, our life. So what type of signs do you, what type of feeling do you have today? Do you see these kind of things in your life? Do you put a lot of focus on recognizing these things? Yeah, actually, I do put a lot of focus into it. Every, like I said, ever since I was a child, I've always put a lot of focus into, uh, you know, signs. I'm not saying that I'm always looking out for signs or anything like that, but I, I think that the human being, in the way they were created, in whatever way it, that is that they were created, has a disposition towards recognizing the signs of Allah. Um... Uh, I think also uh, understanding the concept of Tawheed is very important, uh, uh, you know, in this discussion because Tawheed, it basically, it just refers to the oneness of Allah, you know, and I would like to also put in there in this sentence uh, the on a little bit of a, I guess like in a little excerpt from the Quran where Allah says that he is closer to you than your jugular, you know? So Allah is very personal and very present at all times. You know, he 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 does listen to you, you know? Um, I know sometimes people, when they do something bad or something, they say, oh, but, you know, God has, he's not listening to me, he doesn't want to listen to me, or, or he has abandoned me or something like this, but that's not true. Like Allah, you know, God, he... He sees you. He he sees you everywhere. He hears you everywhere. He's closer to you than your jugular. He, like he's you know that. And what is your jugular? Your jugular is the vein of your life, basically. If you cut your jugular, you're dead. Like there's nothing there. Like you you're gonna die. Um, but your jugular also gives your body all the life that it that it needs. You know, it's it it, it provides your brain with blood and your heart, you know, with, with, with that flow and everything. So, so it, it's a very good thing, you know, and even in the words of God in the Quran, there are signs that you can actually uh, ponder upon uh, like that. Um, so yeah, signs are very important. Um, like for me, when I was a child and I had th that first kind of sign, um, and even onto my, my, you know, the time when I was, uh, exploring religion and, you know, faith and, 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 and all these things I had, I had various, various signs. I am a very strong believer that a lot of these signs are what people going back to what we were talking about earlier, what people consider coincidences, sometimes coincidences and randomness. There is no randomness. Even in uh you know mathematics you know and um and in, in all in these type of sciences that we know that the universe runs on patterns mathematical patterns um everything has has an equation everything is relative like how einstein said you know um you know there is no such thing as as coincidences so when there is a sign that comes to you from god you should pay attention to it. And there is something within the human that recognizes those signs. There's That is not within, I would say, any other creation. And that, I would say, is the concept of the aql. The aql is your rope to tawhid and to your faith, to your religion, to your fitra, to everything. It ties it all together, the aql. Um, which is another concept which I would like you to kind of get into because it does play a huge role in in, in understanding uh, this concept of, of, of signs and, and, and the path uh, towards Allah. And it is, it is kind of like the glue that holds uh, together like every like little like a uh, branch of, of, of the tree of which is, you know, um, the human being. Um, aql, tawheed, you know, all these things, these concepts in, in Islam, the fitra, 
it is all to it, it is all recognized by the aql which was uh according to the uh, shia narrations it was uh, uh i think it was the first um i think it was in the in the hadith of um of um uh, what's his name uh, the Shia hadith, uh, which speak about the the creation of the aql, the the, uh, but yeah, I'll I'll let you take it from there. No, uh, yeah, there there is there is uh, the the creation. In fact, aql is one of the best. It's probably like the best creation that Allah created. And the narration goes when Allah created aql, uh, Allah ordered aql to go back and then it went back and ordered it to come forward it came forward when allah created jahl it ordered it to go back and then Kay asked it to come and it didn't come it's an example of how akal is also the ability to distinguish between right and wrong obviously that counts once you have done your own research and you have the ability to understand that 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 distinction uh it, it's it is that intellectual capability. It's not only about just reading books. It's about having the ability to apply that knowledge and to actually distinguish between uh, what is right versus what is wrong. All the, the other word for that distinction is Furqan. And in fact, there are many iterations. There is an entire book on Apple. And as you're, you're talking, you're talking about your, um, uh, your journey. I'll just bring that book and I can share some of the narrations because I've read that amazing book. It's from the first volume of, of Al-Kafi is all about Akal and how Akal is the best of creation in front of God and how insan, the uh, humans were elevated above all the creation because of this ability, this Akal and how it is linked to free will. Um, so wh why don't you continue about your journey? I know you also explored multiple other religions before coming to Islam. How did that go? Like, why didn't you choose one of those religions? Because you explored many of them. Yeah, um, so this was uh, in my teenage years, um, basically anywhere between like 12 years old to uh, 15 years old. Uh, where I was exploring a lot of different religions. Like, I mean, I was always kind of a weird kid. You know, I would not really go out and do the other things that most of the kids did, though I did hang out with them sometimes. But I was always kind of, you know, in my kind of space. Um, not that I was antisocial or anything. I had plenty of friends. But the thing is that I, I preferred to study you know, like, and not study, like, school material, but, like, actually study, like, the universe around me. Um, and so I began, you know, with uh, with Christianity, which was the most on, you know, the closest thing that I had to exploring religions. Um, I explored my own religion. I came up kind of uh, short on it because of the concept of, you know, the Trinity and these things. Uh, learning, uh, you know, its paradoxical nature. Uh, then I moved on to different forms of Christianity, orthodoxy. Um, I didn't, something I always, the thing that I want to make clear before all of this is that I always followed this gut feeling that I mentioned in the very beginning of this conversation. I always followed that gut kind of instinct, kind of fitra of, of, uh, of, of understanding what if what is in front of me is actually uh, kind of real or not? But this gut feeling is not just oh, it's a gut feeling. No, like I would compare and contrast with uh, with the natural world, which is the most basic thing that we can uh, compare anything that anyone says with. You know, um, because in a way, in a way, um, the natural world that we live in it was kind of like. Perhaps we, it's kind of like the first book of uh, that that Allah has given to us, because in the natural world we learn a lot of lessons, you know, about you know how things work, etc. Um, of course, that's been hijacked by mainstream science nowadays. But I mean, every human being is able to understand the natural world just by experiencing it. Um, and so I would compare and contrast with with those experiences and even things that I never experienced by just uh, making lines, basically, 
and connections. And so when people would say, okay, like, for example, like the Buddhists, which was one of the religions that I studied, they would say, okay, so, um, and there was two types of Buddhism. There was Theravada Buddhism and Mahayana, which are the two main ones. Um, there's other various subsects of, of Buddhism as well, like Shinto and all these other things. Um, but the two main ones, uh, let's go with Theravada first. You know, they have a very nihilist view of uh, of life. They believe that, you know, they don't really believe in in the concepts that the Mahayana school believes in, like, you know, going to heaven or hell or like uh, different spirit beings or this type of stuff. For them, it's it's pretty straightforward. Live a good life and then you kind of just basically you kind of die and the, their concept of reincarnation is not really per se reincarnation true reincarnation it's more like your materials kind of get passed on to to give life to something else so in a way you kind of continue in that way it's a very nihilist view um there is no god in 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 theravada buddhism um uh though some people do claim that but that's actually false um uh, there is there is no concept of it, and the Buddha uh, was never asked. Uh, was once asked about uh, about a God, but he never gave a an answer for that uh, because he didn't feel that that was actually essential um, for in his philosophy. <clears throat> so, um, in in doing so, you you, you kind of get to this point. And I compared and contrasted like, okay, Buddhism, this is what it says, very nihilist. But what I see around me is not, is not that, you know, like the way uh, things are working in the universe, uh, the concept of the hereafter, personal experience of I've had, personal experiences of other people that I've heard, uh, seeing the animals and the way they react to certain things, um, you know, certain things like that, like it just didn't make sense. You know, everything around it, the truth around it was actually collapsing that theory, the the Buddhist theory. And 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 for me, that that was kind of like a way that I kind of followed my gut feeling, but also compared and contrasted with the natural world around it in order to get to a proper conclusion regarding the the actual nature of, of that said philosophy or, or theology or doctrine or whatever. And. Uh, so yeah, um, so yeah, I was like that for 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 a long time, just exploring these religions and never really being satisfied with them because they lacked they lacked that 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 that's something that that I um, that I needed. Um, and and like I said, it's some people like to say, oh, but you know, the truth is personal. Like you you know your your truth is personal, but it's actually. It's actually that the path is personal, is what I would say. But the truth is is very evident. It's not something that you can just make up in your mind and, and you know frolic around with it. Like no, for example, like if I told somebody um, the truth that you're going to die someday, right? Like death is an evident truth in life, and they said no, we we live forever. And I've heard people say this before that you know, the moment you're going to die, you don't really die. You just continue living on forever or something like this. These are just speculations. The truth is you are going to die. Me, you, everybody. Um, this is the evident truth for everybody. So, and and this, I, I feel like death in itself is kind of like a, the biggest sign of Allah that he has left for us as well, besides the Quran and all these things, but one of the biggest signs, because it actually shows to us that, yeah, while the path can be individual, like it always leads to the truth, which is, you know, that, that very point. And so I was led to a point in my life. Um, and of course, people go towards other different points, but you know, it's, it doesn't mean that that's exactly the truth, you know, and I can explain later on how Islam is the truth and why. So and that, that's, that's very interesting. I had a conversation the other day with a person. Some of you might know this person. He, um, he used to be on this channel, uh, like just writing comments and he's an atheist and he always used to come and say, 
uh, nasty things. I kept on answering. One day he said, look at what is happening in a certain part of the world and where's your God? And I replied to him that God is watching like he was watching what was happening to the children of Israel at, at the hands of Pharaoh before he sent Moses. And he's watching and he has watched the same, uh, the same scenes play out multiple times. And that's why the concept of death exists and the justice exists. Because if there's no justice, then there is no point in a person who has been harmed unjustly and the harmer or the perpetrator or the transgressor lives their life like how would that justice be served to that person those child those children who have who are losing their lives without any mistake of their own and uh and that person said that oh that proves that there's no god i said the biggest equalizer for every single human being whether president or general or a billionaire hedge fund manager because in those days jim simmons i don't know if you know him but he was a really successful hedge fund manager 31 billion in his assets recently died like a couple of weeks ago that shows that death and with uh, president of iran dying in a uh, helicopter crash, all of these things happening, it shows that death is the greatest equalizer. The reason why we will be, if there is no death, I can think about and I can potentially consider what atheists or anyone else says about God. But as long as there is death and no one can escape death, then there is no one who can question existence of the creator and then the ultimate judgment that is about to happen. Yeah, so, I, I I would agree with that too. And I've heard many like people like, you know, for example, another good example would be Henry Kissinger. You know who that is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like he, the guy died. Um, yeah. Very, I think there was like an, you, this was a very, uh, interesting one because shortly after he was buried there was a huge earthquake i don't know if you know about that no i did not um yeah there was an earthquake on the ground it is almost as if the ground itself did not want to to you know take this man because oh, of right. all the crimes that he did you know this guy he worked with the cia and mossad and all these other different like agencies that would often you know do and commit certain acts in, in other countries you know um destabilizing them and and these sort of things and he you know when he was buried what was left of him nothing absolutely yep. nothing you know the guy he died you know so did um i think one of the rothschilds or rockefellers i think it was that he had a, play, a helicopter accident in new york uh i think a, a while back a few years ago you know these people the um they live their lives and they do all types of mischief thinking perhaps that maybe they are doing something correct, but how is murdering people, you know, uh, carrying out coups and all this thing actually helping the world <clears throat> for them? It's because they have an agenda and whatever that agenda is, Allah alam. but God knows best what it is. But, um, regardless, uh, that's uh, point, uh, you know, side point, but, um, so one one thing uh, I'll just uh, mention. I don't know if this this guy Jesus Beltran is still around, uh, but he asked this question: splitting of moon and actual evidence. Um, I, th I think the important thing in this regard is the and and this is a question that I've been asked previously. There are two parts to answer this question if this person is here. If not, then anyone who's listening, they can probably use this example for later. Um, one is the nature of miracle, and the second is examples from the past. Nature of miracle is such that the split or that change that happens, it is for that time, and that comes back to when it's, its form. If it doesn't come in its form, that is typically not considered a miracle. And there are many examples for that. For example, uh, what happened 
with the snake or the staff of Moses. Moses threw the staff, it turned into snake, it ate all the snakes, it came back in Moses' hand as a staff. It changed back into a staff. The example, the evidence, like if someone can bring an evidence of that staff converting into a snake and then coming back into a staff from the Jewish people, please bring that evidence and we will bring the evidence for the splitting of the moon. Similarly, when Moses split that entire sea, that sea, Bani Israel, the children of Israel, went through the sea and the sea then came back together again. That if you can come and say that, okay, this is the evidence that the sea was split and it is there, like it's not split today, then we can prove the splitting of the moon. So like those miracles, this is the miracle of God and it has the same sort of uh the, the same sort of characteristics as the older miracles. So moon was split, people saw it, it was brought together. Now, I'll give you an example, another example of at that point, how people wanted to test the prophet multiple times. There is another story uh, from the life of the prophet where the people of Mecca, they said, okay, if you're a prophet, we will believe in you if you ask this particular tree pointed towards a tree back in Makkah that it leaves its place comes over to you and they were like we want that to happen before our eyes they the prophet was standing he they say that they saw the the narrator saying that he saw the tree leaving its place coming out of the ground and the roots walking literally with a huge amount of noise and then it came in front of the prophet it stood in front of the prophet these people who saw this miracle happen they were not satisfied they said oh ask the tree to come down and bow to you if you are the true prophet of god the tree actually came down making that noise and actually bowed down in front of the prophet. These people were still not satisfied. They said, oh, if you're still the prophet, if you're right, because they were saying all of this is magic, make the tree go back up. The prophet asked the tree to go back up. The tree went back at the same position as it was standing, not in its original position. Then they said, ask half of the tree to come down and half of the tree to stay in its original position. They, the prophet told that to the tree. The tree did exactly that. Half of it bowed to the prophet and half of it stayed in its existing, its original position. Mm -hmm. Then these prophets, these comebacks who, keep on, who kept on asking because they did not believe what they were seeing, they were saying, all oh, this is magic. They now ask the tree to go back to its original position. These people, when they said, prophet said, I will ask the tree to go back, but I can assure you that they will not believe. And the prophet told the tree to go back and it went back and they did not believe. Now someone can say, this did never happen because the tree in its is in its original position, whereas the tree did all of those things, but these people did not believe. So belief is something that comes in our hearts. It is a, it is guidance, like Hassan was saying. It comes directly. It's a, it's a special gift from God. And that's why Quran clearly says that Quran itself is guidance for those who believe in the unseen. If you want to see evidence for every single thing without hearing what your heart is telling, then it is likely that you will find it very difficult to find the right path. Uh, what, what do you think about that uh, aspect, Hassan? Yeah, actually, um, I, I do believe, uh, you know, everything that you just said, because I, one thing that I wanted to say was just uh, try not to like, and this is not a personal like attack or anything, but it's not good to base your belief on miracles or like evidence or that sort of miracle type of stuff like that as evidence for 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 God. Uh, because, I mean, even if you read the Bible, you know, 
there's various stories in there um, about miracles that God gave to the people. Uh, one of them is like Beni Israel, uh, the the Israelites, where he basically he he gave them the the commandments, right? He gave them the commandments to Moses, um, and he gave them manna and quail when they were in the desert. But yet the people there still never really they they still doubted God always even when the manna and the quail was, was coming to them uh they still they still doubted him you know like they, they were never really satisfied you know and they yeah they even did um they did even um uh say that uh moses was doing magic at one point and and certain things like that which of course it's, it's not true um uh people when they I've noticed that going back to the Quran and, and Islam and stuff like this, I've noticed that people, when always asked for signs about, you know, um, you know, like they want to see the moon split or they want to see this or that or whatever, they end up not believing. And then because of that, they incur a, a, a bigger punishment on themselves because of that. A uh, good example would be the people of, uh, this, there's a story within the Quran, for those of us here who are not uh, Muslim, of the people of Ad and Thamud. Uh, these people were given signs from God. Um, one of them, uh, they were given the sign of, of the she-camel, where God had uh, presented them with a she-camel that they were you know, supposed to basically take care of. But instead, what they did was, um, of course, their prophet told them, do not harm her, let her drink when she needs to drink and, and all that stuff. But the people, they didn't believe. So what did they do? They hamstrung her and they, uh, I think they did kill her. Um, and the punishment came to them very swiftly, you know. So it goes back to that whole, you know, topic that we were talking about earlier where, yes, God does give you signs. Uh, he does give you a chance. But his punishment is also very, very swift. Very, very swift. Um, you know, at any moment you do something, what happens? You don't know. You could end up dying from a heart attack suddenly. Or you could, you know, get in a car crash, you know, the next day or something like that, you know. But you were given signs before that. You're given a chance to to change. Unless, it's, of course, it's your, it's your destiny that you're going to die at that point. But if, per se, you can avoid it by changing certain things uh, that are leading you down a certain path, Allah will give you those signs um, to try to help you um, because he's very merciful. You know, he's first and foremost a Rahman, a Rahim, you know, uh, the, the most merciful, the, you know, and, and so, um, yeah, uh, basing your belief off of miracles is not something that that I would recommend. Uh, I know that if you're coming from a Christian, especially a Catholic background, that's all that Catholicism is about, is miracles. I mean, they, you know, you see the, there's the meme of, uh, you know, the Virgin Mary on the, on the tortilla, you know, <laughs> or the piece of bread or, or, or something like that, or, or they see Jesus like on a piece of wood or something like that, or, or their statues that cry. Like these things, are, are these 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 should not be signs of 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 uh, of uh, uh, these should not be anchors for belief. And one um, evidence I can point to that in modern day is people see these evidences. People see these evidences um, within Christianity. Okay, they see the the crying statue, which most of the, I mean all of them are pretty much hoaxes hoaxes. But they see the the statue and a crying or whatever and then uh what happens after that they continue to sin they continue to to you know disbelieve you know they continue to give thanks to somebody other than god you know um people people just it's not good to base your your whole faith on on miracles um if you want to believe in the splitting of the moon then okay Mashallah, like you believed in it and, and you have a strong belief system for that. Like you have a, a good belief in your heart, I mean, for that. Um, but you shouldn't base all of your belief on that, you know. You should first and foremost get acquainted with God 
as uh, as as what he as what he asks us uh, to to be acquainted with him in his mercy. Of course, you have to think. Okay, well, I'm breathing every day. Uh, my brain is working every day. My heart is is pumping. My lungs are are, are inflating. You know, my my you know my nervous system is is running perfectly well. Everything you have to think about these things, and these are miracles in themselves. The fact that there's life on Earth is is a miracle, and that's even proven by science. That that the 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 amount of things that had to go right for our universe, for our little solar system, for our little planet to even have and contain life is one in however many billions like it's 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 a it's a very small percentage on everything has a place on this earth scientifically we have niches you know that animals fill we have environments that that are very delicate uh we have uh you know the fish in the ocean they follow certain paths the birds they follow the stars you know, migratory birds. Uh, we have uh, various different examples of how everything is very well balanced and perfected in the universe. And these are signs for you to ponder upon. These are the real miracles that are there every single day. So it, it's it's not good to base things off of, of miracles like per se, like, oh, you know, like the you know, the thunder made a bush burn or or this or that or, or or these things or the splitting of the moon. Yes, these are good miracles and we have faith in them and that they really did happen, but we don't base our full belief in them because there's various, various diff- miracles in our life uh, to this day that, that we overlook. You know, we have a lot to be grateful to God for. And I would say that man is very un- un- ungrateful, to be honest. If there's a local town uh, town uh, con- uh, member, they'll be like, I want to go to the Senate, uh, state Senate, and then the Congress, and then this, uh, the the uh, the overall Senate, and then become the president, and then et cetera, et cetera. There is like there is no limit. The more you get, the less you feel like you have it. But it's the same thing with miracles. If a person is one who believes that it's Uh, yeah, if, if there is a person who believes that uh, uh, he's one of those who says it's never enough, they will always see whether it's money, it's never enough. Power, it's ma- never enough. They will see miracles, it's never enough. No matter what they get, it's never enough because they're never content. They're never uh, f- there to find the light. But those who one sign they realize that how precious every breath is and that one trigger changes their entire life they start going embarking on the journey to find the truth every time they just keep on like how you were saying comparing the personal experiences with what does the religion say and always being always keep on using your apple your intellect your capability to to decipher like what does this mean what does this sign mean and they don't need many signs one thing can trigger them and those are also like once they reach that state of like realization that they found the truth for them the worldly sustenance becomes like oh yeah i'm getting a lot of sustenance i don't need more because this world is a temporary place 
the value that they have in the society they feel like i don't deserve this value this is a blessing that has been given to me and as they become more and more grateful these things keep on increasing and as they increase they become even more humble even though at the same time satan tries to say like oh this is because of you no it's not because of that particular person in fact there is a dua there is a special prayer that people should recite especially when they have they feel like they have enemies or they have uh, Uh, this word is uh, this word is used the holy spirit the ruh which is uh, which is also mentioned in christians uh, christianity it's mentioned in the quran tanazzul al malaika to war ruh uh, as part of the chapter in nazal now so basically angels and ruh are two different creations of allah and in that particular dua it is mentioned that whoever receives allah who allah when he places his spirit on someone he or she will have something special going for them no one can even go against uh, them even if they try the enemies can try whatever they want but they will get this special thing and the same concept it's nothing new it's, which also proves by the way that the message is same the message that was sent before by uh, uh, to jesus even though there are other dimensions that have been corrupted but there were direct dimensions like virginity of uh, virgin mary or jesus showing miracles or jesus bringing dead to life or jesus able to cure the sick or the spirit help from the holy spirit or the archangel gabriel helping and all of these things and jesus coming back towards the end of times all of these things show the consistency of the message and the importance of realizing that single trigger roman catholicism uh, or roman catholic then moving on to through different religions trying to find what is the right religion and try to find the right path and then coming over to islam uh, and he was talking we we did not talk about how he came to islam we just talked about what was he feeling uh, because it's more important and this is something that i've mentioned many times it is important to develop that feeling that connection doesn't matter that which religion you have because if you build that that connection you will automatically have your nature your fitra pushing you to find the right path is that uh, the right perspective uh, brother hasan to think about that um can you repeat the question just one more time so if you build the right connection with god and if you try to realize that there is something special uh there is a creator and i need to find the right path you will automatically find because things will happen in your life that will guide you in that direction if you start looking for those signs yeah actually yeah that's that's very true i mean um and you know nothing nothing in life really kind of you know lands on your lap you know uh you you actually have to go and and, and find uh the truth you know uh as weird as that may seem but you know once you get to the to the truth you realize that it and i know this sounds kind of cliche but it was in front of you the whole time 
It, re- it really was. Um, and that's kind of one of the feelings I had when I uh, first came to Islam was like, yeah, this this is everything that I've always felt was correct. And it was always right in front of me, you know. But yet I had to go through this whole circuit to kind of uh, even get there. And um, yeah, I do encourage people to go out and, and, and explore and find, um, you know, explore everything, you know, if you need to. If you feel like Islam is the correct path right away, like you feel like this is right, go for it. This is the best choice. But if you feel like, you know, oh, we, you know, and, and the reason I say this, go out and explore is because I can assure you that whatever path you take, if you're really honest and sincere about finding the truth, it's going to lead you straight back to Islam. Always. Um, so if you're, if you're that type of person, go ahead, go and explore. But either way, you're gonna be you're gonna come back to Islam, and what I mean by is coming back to Islam is is that you're coming back to to that fitra that we were talking about earlier, that feeling that there is a oneness of God, that there is something there, that there is something beyond, something incomprehensible, something that created you, but also created all the other things in in existence, the little animals, you know the the way the wind goes, you know, you start to see the patterns. You go, perhaps you got you got involved with like some sort of, uh, you know, uh, mathematics or maybe something like, you know, you started stargazing or you started getting into this stuff, you know. You will see the patterns. Everything has a pattern and everything leads to that oneness of God because then you start to realize that, oh, you know, if everything has a pattern, you know, you, there can't be two things. There can't be like two gods or a thousand gods. It only has to be one God. Like, that's the easiest way I can explain it. If I had to explain this, I I would probably not be able to explain it in one one video. But if you really want to go out and explore, go ahead and do it. But if you really want to like take a look at Islam, then then I'm telling you, at first it's probably going to be weird. The concepts are going to be. Like, oh, you know, like, ah, you know, like, you know, because you, you were you were indoctrinated into a different belief system. But the more you get in tune with yourself, the more you use your aql, the more you use the tools that Allah has given you, um, that God has, 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 has given you as, as a gift, uh, you know, the more you start to see that, yeah, this is the truth. This is the way you're supposed to live. Everything that it says here is how it is, you know. Um, in the Quran, a book that was written um 1400 years ago if you want if you want scientific facts you can look at them up there god says you know we created you from a clot of blood you know uh basically from a liquid that comes out from the man you know a long time ago people didn't know that they just knew that okay well you know i impregnate my wife with this and and blah 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 and just that you know uh, but they didn't know the the formation of like the bones, how the how the how the how the flesh comes onto the bones, you know what parts were created first, you know the development of the child. All of that is in the Quran. All of that is in the Quran, um, and and literally like many various other things. Like there's one uh, episode I was watching one time about uh, you know uh, the weather, and they were talking about like how the dust comes from the Sahara in Africa, it moves all the way across the Atlantic. And that same dust, which is on a dead land, which is the desert, fertilizes a land that has abundance, like the Amazon forest. And then all of that, the, the, that water and that abundance that the, that the Amazon accumulates from a dead land goes up in the air into a sky river is what they call it. It's just basically a current of just basically precipitation that moves forward and even, you know, gives life to other places here in the Americas. So Allah talks about that even in the Quran where he says that, you know, he takes, you know, like he gives it as an example where he says he takes from the from the from the dead land in order to fertilize something living, you know, um, and and these things were not known, you know, in the past, like how you know people would ask themselves, like how can you fertilize uh, a land with something that is dead? This is impossible. But now with modern science, we understand that this is possible. So if you want, like you know, evidences like that, you can definitely find them. But you have to 
be sincere in them. And you have to make that connection with God in whatever way, you know, at first I know you're, you people here may, may not be Muslim, so they don't know like how to pray, but it doesn't really matter. The, when I first started my journey, I didn't like, you know, bow down like a Muslim and, you know, do all that stuff. No, I just simply ask God like, hey, like I need to know the truth. Can you please guide me to the truth? Like with all sincerity, I'm asking you. I was a kid at that time. I was like 13 years old. Um, so anybody can do that and God will guide them. Like literally he will guide you and there may be ups and downs and some of the truths that you might learn may not be to your liking, but it's not up to us to, to like them. It's, it's just the truth. It is, it is what it is, you know? And if you f seek it, you will find it in the end. Oh, that, that, that's, that's very powerful. Um, I, I, have you read this uh, this letter from Imam Ali al-Islam to his son, Last Will? Have you read this letter before? Uh, no. Okay. I have included this in uh, the comments. Well, I, this letter, I read this letter when I graduated from college. And I read it before, but I was too young. But when I read it after college, it was something that truly opened my perspective about God. It, and uh, not about God. It, it opened my perspective about life. It opened my perspective about God. It opened my perspective about Prophet Muhammad. It opened my perspective about Imam Ali alayhi salam. It opened my perspective about the world that we live in and how it is important for us to actually explore ourselves before coming to the realization what is the right path because this this letter is is so powerful where he says he the imam Ali it's it's this link and you guys can review it on your own and tell me like whoever is live today if you're here tomorrow i'm going to cover this letter piece by piece for everyone because it is so powerful that uh, it, it's worth going through. But he says a few things which are very powerful like, oh my son, explore. If you do not understand, ask questions. I am telling you now because the mind of a young child, a young man, a woman in youth is very fertile. I want to give you this information before Satan comes and induces false information and narratives in you. Always remember that there is one God. If there were multiple gods, things would have fell apart and so on and so forth. And he also says, do not believe in anything until unless you've done your own research. So many religions who say you just believe in it. Imam Ali is not saying that. He said, ask questions, as many questions as you want. Once you are comfortable, then you submit. Because once you're comfortable and you believe in the oneness of God and that he, God has shown a clear path to him through the prophet and his household, then when people actually submit, it becomes a very different type of submission. It is submission with heart, which translates into the true Islam, not just following prayers without even understanding what does that mean. So I would even encourage uh, like everyone to read that uh, particular uh, particular bill. I'll cover this uh, over the next few uh, discussions. But uh, any other thing that you might have or from anyone else that there might be? I know it's 78 minutes, so thank you for the long conversation, Hassan. Yeah, uh, basically, I mean... If I had anything else to add was just basically just kind of reiterating what you just said, which is uh, what uh, Imam Ali um, said, which was if you're having, you know, if you're not ready to take that step towards Islam and and all these things, then just just go out and explore. Like, honestly, that's what I did. I mean, and that's what many people have done. It's not just me. It's like many people have done that. They've explored. They've, um, you know. And they've all come across uh, and to the to the realization of the truth. 
Now you might ask, okay, but there's people who have just become Buddhist and they stay Buddhist or people who stayed Christian or this and that. Well, the matter with that is um, that it's just people, like I said, the paths are, are all different, but the truth is all the same, like I said. But the truth will not always be in your path, if that makes sense. Some people, they, they, they you know, they... They go into these religions and stuff like that. And for them, that is the truth. <clears throat> but it doesn't make it the real truth. Because these are people usually who have not had any, like, um, you know, confrontation with uh, certain elements in, in life that actually prove to them that what they are believing is actually false or true. Um, for Muslims, we're always constantly berated uh, on this front. Like, we're always, like, being kind of attacked on this front, like we're always being told, oh, but look, your prophet did this, or look, the religion is, says this, or this and that. And all these things have already been answered. If you really look into it, they've all been answered. Now, if you go to a Buddhist and you ask him, okay, um, okay, so give me, you know, like what, what's the purpose of, of reincarnation, you know? They just say, what are they going to tell you? But then they're going to tell you, oh, okay. Some of them will tell you, okay, so it's just basically to pass on life. And then some say, okay, well, it's it's to reach a higher degree in, 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 in spiritual like nature, you know, and stuff like this. But then what's the point of that, you know? But Islam, Islam tells you exactly what the point of, of life is and, and, and everything. It tells you that, you know, um, you know certain uh, things that you must follow. You know, but then you compare those. Okay, God says, uh, do not uh, intake alcohol. Okay, a lot of people like like to drink alcohol nowadays, but why does He say that? You know, He says even in the. Is a. It looks like we have lost your audio. Hey, uh, it looks like we have lost your audio. So while uh, Hassan joins back from an audio perspective, any other questions from anyone? I know it was a different type of session uh, and uh, it was very insightful for me as well because obviously me being a Muslim, born Muslim, it was different. It is a different experience for a person who, like for me, experiencing different cultures, talking to people for the first time and sending their perspective was unique. And Hassan gave a very different perspective. Hassan, are you back? So any any other questions that you might have in general or other things? Otherwise, we can we can end the conversation and we're gonna start uh, tomorrow. And tomorrow, uh, I will also talk about this particular will from Ali ibn Abi Talib salam regarding a twist son, and we can go into the details of this because it's it's very powerful. It is so powerful. Like I I would even just say like share one. It's like I think Hassan is joining. Hello. Hey, sorry. It seems like you were. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, I had an incoming call and it kind of blocked off the audio. Oh no problem. No problem. Okay. Yeah. You you were saying something. The you were giving some last comments. Yeah, basically, like the example of, of, of comparing religion with actually what's true, you know, using your aql, basically. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the Quran, uh, Allah says that you should not use, you should not drink um, alcohol. But he also specifies in the Quran that there is some benefit in alcohol. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the benefit in alcohol? Of course, you can put it on wounds, like if you get hurt or something, you know, you get... You can apply some alcohol, you know, or like rubbing alcohol if your muscles hurt or something like that. Um, it's also used like uh, as fuel in certain things. But that 
the benef- the 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 wrong the the harm in it uh, outweighs the benefit. So yep. there's there's some benefit in it, but there is harm in it more of it. So what is that harm? It's like that spiritual harm. It hurts your your spirit. You know, like you're not really able to you know you know and physically as well. You're not able to f- formalize speech. It does take you away from God because it's an, it's an addictive substance. So that's the spiritual aspect of it. It like distracts you from God. Anything that is addictive, basically, um, it's a tool of, of shaitan in the, in that form. And um, you know that the, the, these two just though just with those two things, it's already causing so much harm to you. You know, um, so you know that's how you compare and contrast. You know, so if you have a question of the Quran that you cannot understand, I'm talking about the Quran here, um, then just go and 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 seek out the answers. You know, maybe you might go to somebody and they'll give you an answer, you know, and if you're not satisfied with that answer, go to somebody else who might know more, you know, and this person will probably give you a satisfactory answer. But you must always like be patient as well. In Islam, the concept of sabr, which is means patience, is very important. And I know most people nowadays, they like answers right away because we have the convenience of Google and stuff like that. But sometimes in order to get a concrete answer, you have to have a little bit of patience. And um, I struggled with some questions as well in Islam in my earlier days, but eventually I did get the get the answers. And uh, Alhamdulillah. And I mean, this is this is all I can really say in the end. It's just it's having patience and and uh, you know having that faith that this is the truth and 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 seeking it out uh, to your best best I'll, capabilities. I'll end with one question for you. Yeah. Uh, your struggle of <clears throat> I, I know you're still young so but you're let's say half of your life uh, or like around that time or like let's say 10 years uh, approximately it was it what is that struggle worth it uh to become a muslim or what do you mean oh yeah in in general like i i know because becoming a muslim it's not only about like you accept say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and you know like have to do certain things you have to read you have to learn it's it's a package right it's a way of living it's not like uh to just say that you're muslim because many muslims claim they're muslims they're born muslim but they're not really truly practicing Muslims, so it's hard for them to actually claim that they're Muslims. But do you think it's worth the struggle? Because it's not easy. Yeah, I think the, the struggle is worth it. But even, let me tell you something about this. Even now, I struggle with certain things. For example, getting up for Fajr prayer. You know, sometimes I, it's very difficult to get up. You know, um, doing certain things. You know, um, finding halal food that that uh, that I can't uh, that I can't uh, that I can eat. You know, uh, certain things like this, of course. But the thing you have to remember is this: your intention is very important. You're not gonna get everything right away. If you do, mashallah, good job. You know, but yep. most people they they can't do it right away. And but you also have to. You, look, there's a concept here of, of understanding God's mercy. God is very, very merciful. But you should not also take advantage of that mercy. You cannot be like, you know, like for one thing that was with Catholics was, oh, you know, we go repent to the Father, and then next week or the day after that, I'll probably go back to smoking something or drinking or, or hanging out with uh, women, soliciting them or something like that, right? Like, that's okay because I'll just come back and, and repent and all my sins will be forgiven, you know? No. In Islam, we have the concept of, of intention. Intention is very, very important. Um, you know, you might be struggling. I've seen sisters out there who have very difficult times, especially like convert sisters that come from like uh, American, you know, like white American background. Parents, you know, very uh, Caucasian, you know, and like they're, you know, they, they struggle with wearing the hijab because their parents are like oh you look ugly or you shouldn't wear that you look like a terrorist you know the t word you know and stuff like that you know like they 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 call them out a lot of horrible things um and they struggle with this stuff right i've seen sisters who don't have that you know that pressure in their life but yet they still decide not to wear the 
the hijab, but they're struggling with something else. It depends, you know what? It's all very individual. People struggle with with different things. Nobody's perfect. Your intention does matter, though. Your intention matters to get better and and worship God how He wishes for you to worship. Because I was watching a video one time of a uh, Sheikh Kazwini. Um, um, uh, he's he's a uh, uh, Shia Sheikh up in Toronto. And he was giving a story about how, uh, of a narration of how, you know, in the creation of Adam, uh, Iblis, you know, uh, Satan, basically, he did not want to bow down to to Adam. And um, Iblis was actually given some chances at some point to actually um, repent. Like, uh, God still actually gives Iblis the chance to repent. You know, <clears throat> but he he knows that he's not gonna do it. You know, so yeah, the chance is actually even there for 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 Satan. You know, out of God's mercy to repent. You know, but he doesn't do it. You know, because of this this arrogance and 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 this stuff. But um, basically, the point I'm trying to make is that um, is that um. Uh, can you remind me of the question again? Sorry, so that I can get back on the point. Yeah, no. the The question uh, is basically you answered that that uh, it, it is it is worth the struggle. Yeah, yeah, and and so yeah, basically, yeah, everything you're gonna deal with and and all these things. Because sorry, I'm like the way I speak, like I'm, the way my brain works, I kind of go off the rails sometimes. But um, yeah, basically, yeah, like the. The point I'm trying to make here is that you're going to struggle and, but your intention matters, you know, but never despair of the mercy of God, just like Iblis did is what I'm trying to say, because Iblis, he, he doesn't, uh, you know, he, he, he's a person that tells you, okay, like, you, you know, you did something really wrong or whatever, you know, you probably shouldn't pray anymore because of this and that. You shouldn't listen to that because another, another thing is that what Iblis did was he told something to God that in return for not prostrating to Adam, that he would actually worship God in a way that no other creation has ever worshipped him. But what what's wrong with that? Like, right, right? So we see that what I mean to make an example here of is we have all these different religions and they all ask you to go and worship God in whatever way they, they see fit. But... Just like Iblis did. He said, I'm going to go worship you in, in, in this fantastic way. God, all the only thing he asked him was just prostrate to Adam. That's it. You know? So when it comes to this, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to realize that, yes, you're going to struggle, but your intention should always be pure upon worshiping God how God wishes for you to worship him and not, you know, your own way of, of, of doing things like, okay, Maybe you say, okay, I can't get up for Fajr, so I'll just pray Fajr at like right before Duhr when I wake up. That's not good, you know? You should always have the intention to try to wake up for Fajr and these things. And yes, that's difficult. You should always have the intention to try to wear the hijab, even though it's difficult. But your intention is very important. And I just felt like I needed to elaborate on that because it's very easy to like say this in like simple terms, but like I feel like sometimes you need like something more of a of a no, complex. No, thank, thank you. This is this is very uh, very helpful. I'll just end with uh, two quick perspectives on the worth of this journey. Um, I asked uh, a scholar recently, "What is the value of a person finding the right path in front of God?" So how happy will God be when a person, when a human who's not on the right path, who doesn't recognize God, who either because of satanic influences or how they've been brought up or what the circumstances of the society that they're living in, they have just ignored God. And then they come back with their research, with their influence influences they come back to god how happy would god be how happy would allah be and the answer was was a narration that he gave me he said that the prophet told imam Ali 
that if you are in a desert and you have a camel and you're alone in the desert and the camel has your belongings, your food, your water, your clothes, your tent and everything, and you sat under a tree while you put the camel right next to the tree and you woke up after a few hours after your rest and then you found you looked for the camel you couldn't find that camel it is nowhere to be found so you go up down right left up the sand dunes down the sand dunes look around all the places and you cannot find that camel the night is coming and you are alone you have lost your water supply you've lost your food supply you've lost every single thing and you're totally hopeless and with that in that hopeless situation you think about going back to the tree where you were resting so that that might be the only place that you can go and find some rest and when you're hopeless and go there so that you can die over there uh, without anything and you come close to that place and you see your camel there with all your supplies how happy do you think that person will be if you can understand the happiness of that particular person who lost all hope and suddenly he now has everything that he wanted allah is 70 times more happier when a servant of his who has lost who was lost to the circumstances of this world because of free will because of the nafs and because of the Satan, when that servant comes back to the master, the master is 70 times more happier that the servant came himself. And the so that's one perspective from Allah. The second perspective as a human, there is nothing in the world, nothing, which is more important than finding the right path and accepting, submitting to the will of God. Because Satan did not submit to the will of God and all the prophets prayed for them to die while they're submitting to the will of God. If you can find the will of God and then submit to the will of God, the true will, not those who which has been manipulated, it is worth every single thing in this world and the hereafter because every single one of us will die one day and when that death comes, then the veils are removed and we can see the majesty of Allah and at that point, even the worst of pharaohs, they will say, I hope, I believed in God, but it is too late. So if we can, with our free will, believe, find the true path and believe in true path and submit to the will of God, it is better than anything else that we can get in this world because we will prepare for the hereafter. Like there is nothing that can be done. So that was that was my comment. And I don't, I believe there are no other questions. So we will end. Hassan, thank you very much. Really engaging session. And hopefully we can have this uh, in the future as well. Yeah, thank you for having me as well. Thank you. We'll talk.